Hello everybody, my name is Stuart Knight, author of the books Marginalizing White Supremacy, Poetic Visions, A Steep Mister for a Sister, and my latest work, A Spirit the World Has Forgotten. Today I'm going to talk about the reasons why I wrote the book Marginalizing White Supremacy. See, back in my younger days, you know, they used to have these shirts with various sayings on them concerning African and black people back in the days when rap was conscious. One particular shirt that I had was, it's a black thing you wouldn't understand. And I used to look down at this shirt, this big imprint of Africa, and this phrase on the front of it, and said, I don't understand a damn thing about Africa. And here I am wearing this shirt, which in turn made me a hypocrite. <laughs> So, from that day forward, I began my quest to learn African history. You know, fortunately, I was out of town at the time when I really started and I had access to a library, so I read a lot of the books that the library had to offer. And upon coming back home, one day, I had a conversation with a white man, and we was talking race politics. You know, he was a slumlord in the hood, you know, and he was renting out to black people, and all he wanted to talk about was the ills that many of us suffer from. And uh, so he said, he made a comment to me that I found very intriguing. He said to me that if black people were serious about revolution, Malcolm X's birth site wouldn't look the way it does. I said, huh, that's interesting. So the next day I took a trip up to Malcolm X's birth site, which is right around the corner from where I live actually. And, and true enough, it was overgrown weeds like you wouldn't believe. Nine foot tall sticker bushes, uh, limbs down everywhere. I mean, it was, it, it was bad. And it just so happens that, you know, a few weeks before that conversation, I had acquired a lawnmower from a hustler in the hood, you know, a riding lawnmower. So I said, well, maybe, you know, maybe this is what I can do with this riding lawnmower is clean up Malcolm X's birth site. So I went in there, you know, I started cleaning up. You know, I still got a scar on my hand from a nine foot tall sticker bush. I hard to see. You know, that was back in uh, 1994, 95. I don't know if you can see it, it's right there. I still wear that scar, proudly. And uh, I started in on the work. Now, it took me a couple months to get it all cut down, all the sticker bushes and the grass mold on the limbs, moved over into one area, you know, and got it all cut, but it became beautiful, beautiful. All the time I was doing it, you know, I never got stung by as much as a mosquito or a bee or anything. I found that real fascinating, still fascinating to this day. So, while there, one day, after it was all cleaned up, you know, I had asked the spirits to uh, let me be a prophet. Let me be a prophet and figure out what is really the deal with black people in this country and in the world. So, I kept digesting information. And during that time, you know, I had also went back to work as a construction worker a heavy equipment operator, as a matter of fact. Now, anybody who does that type of work knows that racism runs rampant in that business because you're dealing with a bunch of blue-collar white males who, have, who feel that they need to protect a craft, a skilled craft. And when you come in as a black man and you show excellence in the field, they tend to not like that. And that still goes on to this day with me because I still do the same type of work. And over time I began to notice similar behaviors amongst these white males, you know, in their efforts to either get me frustrated or get me to not do a quality, there's as quality of work as I like to do in a sense to make them feel better and also to get me fired from jobs. I had lost quite a few jobs behind white racism, even to this day. 
I, I have still lost employment due to white male racism. So through these experiences, I began to see that in most instances, the same behaviors would manifest. First, they wouldn't believe that you could do it. Then when you show that you can do it, they try to keep you from doing it. And then when they can't keep you from doing it, they manufacture ways to get you out of doing it. And so this has happened to me many a times, and I've come to a point to where, you know, well, maybe I need to try to find other avenues for myself, you know, economically, and still do something that's beneficial for black people. So I said, well, let me write a book about what I have experienced, you know, in the field of heavy equipment operation, in conjunction with the knowledge I had begun to gain about African history, African culture, and put them together in the book, and that book became known as Marginalizing White Supremacy. The book, in my opinion, is based solely on just that. You know, my experiences and my opinions about attitudes, and actions that are exhibited by white people who have a white supremacist mentality. Now, since having written that book, you know, it is a book of theory, but since having written that book, all of the theories in that book have been verified in my, through my experiences as a heavy equipment operator and as a black man in this country. From techniques and tactics that they use to frustrate black people with slick language, misleading comments, and also false friendships. Attitudes white supremacists have when it comes to our input in thought, our output in sports, and our usage in the broader white supremacist system. Now what I mean by that is our usage for exploitation. You see, that's what white supremacy is all about exploitation. Most of us think it's about hate. Most of us believe it is about uh, dislike because of our color. No. It, it is a dislike of our very existence because with that existence comes the potential for us to be stronger competitors against white supremacy in the global perspective. So with that work, I had hoped, and still hope, to enlighten black people into the ways of white supremacy so that many of us won't feel as frustrated or as lost or confused or, you know, um, hopeless when we become victimized by the mindset. You know, one thing we have to understand, black like people, is that we have to come together to provide avenues and options for our own to lessen the suffrage under white supremacy. That's why, in my opinion, the book, Marginalizing White Supremacy, is so important because it is written from the experiences of a black man with the hopes to help other black people solve this puzzle and make a better picture of it. Once again, this is Stuart Knight, author of the books Marginalizing White Supremacy, Poetic Visions, A Steep Mister for a Sister, and my latest work, A Spirit the World Has Forgotten. Thank you very much.
Have a good day. Peace.